Welcome back to the Toffee Booze, your source for all things Everton. I'm Ollie Hayes in State and bringing you my reaction to Everton 1, Fulham 1 uh, on Saturday at Goodison at half five. So yeah, let's get straight into it and I'm going to try and be as positive as possible in this one. Um, we'll start in the first half. I, it's, it's difficult to be quite positive about our performance in general, but you know I'll, I'll take as much of it as I can um, from the first half. I thought we defended quite well. Fulham didn't really have many chances in terms of you know clear cut. They had to score. Um, they did hold the majority of the ball, Fulham, in that first half. They created the majority of the chances. And I felt like we didn't really get into the game as much as I maybe wanted us to. Um, you know, in, in these games where I was looking at it before the game, on paper, the lineups. I don't think there's too much in terms of um, difference in terms of quality in the squads. I think Fulham have got, you know, enough players with quality to, to hurt us, but also we have players with quality to hurt them. So I think it was a, a relatively even match up in terms of the squads and on paper looking at the two teams before the, the uh, ahead of kickoff. Um, it was all about small margins, really. Obviously. We had one big chance in that first half where Idrissa Gay lined one up. Um, you know, the amount of times I've seen Idrissa Gay line them up on the edge of the box and then sky into the park end or the, or the Gladys Street end. You know, the amount of times we've seen that, but he did actually hit the underside of the crossbar there and was was very unlucky not to get the get the uh, the ball over the line. And then Dominic Calvert Lewin following in um, was just offside, and I think. There's two ways you could look at it. Yep, yeah, it's just unlucky that Dominic calvert was offside, but should he be maybe reacting to that a little bit sooner, maybe reacting a little bit quicker and get himself back onside for when the ball does eventually drop or you know, you know, he has to preempt it really. So there's two ways you can look at it. I think it was probably just a little bit unlucky. You know, and as I said before, it's just small margins in a game where, as I said before, the the quality and in, in the the, the difference in quality in, in uh, between the two teams isn't isn't massive. I think it was just about small margins. So going into half time, I was I was feeling, yeah, we're not playing good enough here. We're, we're not putting in a good enough performance. I think, you know, Fulham, as I said before, had the majority of chances in that first half. I think they were unlucky not to go ahead through Emil Smith Rowe in that first half, and thought Jimenez was was pulling up a lot of strings and, and testing Pitford quite a lot. So, I think going into that halftime break, I was thinking, yeah, we're not we're not playing well. But also, there was no thought process really in terms of how we were going to create chances. It it did feel like we'd reverted to type a lot, um, you know, before the Ipswich game. Um, of just lumping balls forward at Calvert Lewin and just trying to feed on scraps, and that's fine if if Dice wants to play that way. But for me, we're not creating enough off Dominic Calvert Lewin there. So it, it was a very poor first half performance. There was no real standout performer for me, and I was thinking, you know, in a game where we're probably lucky to be owning in the break level, um, you have to come out in that second half and be proactive and get at Fulham, especially at nil nil. Um, you expect a reaction, don't you? You expect a, a team like Everton to go out and and put in a decent performance early doors in that in that second half. And we, we did the complete opposite, really. We we kind of let Fulham again have it all their own way. We sat off them. There wasn't really much going forward for us, and it resulted in Alex Iwobi being able to waltz through pretty much our entire midfield and slot one into Pickford's right hand corner at the at the park end and. He finishes brilliantly, to be fair. Why didn't he do that in an Everton shirt? I'll never know. Um, it was kind of probably, I think it was destined, written in the stars today for Alex Iwobi to score on his, on his first return back to Goodison Park. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed, obviously, to see him on the score sheet. I think that's, but as an Evertonian, we, we all know what was going to happen. He was always going to have some role to play in it, wasn't he? But yeah, as I said before, the, the way we didn't close him down, we let him pretty much run through in a straight line and, and slot into the, the, the far corner. It was just really poor and to, to see us go 1-0 down, you, you're thinking then, right, I, I don't think we've got enough to come back here. I don't think we're, you know, the, the win, the three points is definitely out of the question. Can we just maybe spark a reaction here and, and get at Fulham and try and create a chance? And we did actually straight from the kickoff, Jack Harrison had a chance in behind, which he spooned well wide into the into the Gladys Street end. And the, the thing that, that disappointed me the most about Oobi's goal, it was obviously going 1-0 down is the, the biggest disappointment. But, you know, off the back of that, it didn't spark a reaction in terms of changing tactics. We, we didn't change tactics at all. Uh, obviously, Dyche made a like-for-like -like substitution of, of Jesper Lindstrom for Jack Harrison um, you know, about five, ten minutes after the goal went in. But apart from that, there was no tactical change. There was no tweaking in, in the formation. It was just, you know, again, the same, same, same punting the ball forward, trying to find Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and feeding off scraps. And that's fine. Again, I've, I've got no problems with that if you can make it work, but it doesn't work. And unfortunately, we we didn't reap the rewards of any of that and lumping, lumping the ball forward. I felt sorry for Calvert-Lewin at times because he just had no service really. And um, yeah, so I, I was a bit disappointed with how we reacted to that goal. Obviously, you do expect Dyche to maybe make a tactical change and try and change the script as he likes to say, but he, he, he just didn't do that. And, 
only the Dwight McNeil injury um, on about 84, 85 minutes actually did spark a change in formation. If you can call it a change in system, I don't think you can. I think he was forced into it, but Jared Branthwaite came on for Dwight McNeil um, and Michael Keane went up front alongside Beto. Um, Beto was obviously subbed on for Dominic Calvert-Lewin quite late on. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll, we all know what happened with the Beto goal. We'll get to that in a minute, but... Does that show that Daesh is completely devoid of ideas and he's completely out of ideas that he's willing to put Michael Keane on up front? Um, listen, I think it's been a running joke out of the fan base in the last week that obviously his, his great goal against Ipswich and you know he's on <laughs> relatively decent scoring form this season for a centre-half. I think there is a joke, obviously, uh, amongst the fan base that he could play up front. Whether that, that was the, the right idea, I'm not so sure. Obviously, we did get the, the point in the end, so call me wrong. Maybe it was the right idea, but... Does it show to me that, that Daesh is out of ideas? I think it does a little bit. I think it's a little bit worrying that Michael Keane was thrown on up front. Um, but that being said, there was probably no other option, was there really? I think he was kind of forced into that change of system, if you can call it that. But also, Aurel Mangala came on. I thought he did okay. Um, you know, he was quite positive in the way he, he ran forward with the ball. Um, obviously, Abdullah Decore, I don't think he had a his best of games. I think that was probably one of his worst games in an Everton shirt. I think he was absolutely horrendous. Didn't do anything going forward. Was very clumsy on the ball. Gave Fulham a lot of chances. Um, so it was probably one of his worst games in an Everton shirt, to truth be told. So I think that means Mangala might be given a nod next weekend against Southampton. And I think he deserves it because I think he did okay when he came on. But yeah, we might as well talk about uh, the late goal by Beto. Um, I'm so happy for me for him. In, uh, me personally, I'm so happy for him because, you know, it you could see how much it meant to him at the end of the game. He was absolutely in tears. He was distraught. And I think he, it's just been such a long few weeks for him. Um, obviously, we know the whole situation about him getting subbed off for Ashley Young in the Southampton game um, in the Cup. That was a whole situation. I think a, a lot of people maybe would have written better off after that, and especially under Sean Dyche. I don't think many people would have seen him make another appearance under Sean Dyche after that instance. So... Um, every credit to Beto coming on, taking his uh, taking his chance. Obviously, that's his first substitute appearance since that Southampton game. So taking his first chance since then. And obviously, three shots um, on the board for him this evening. Won a corner from one, a good save from Leno for the other one. And then the third one resulted in a goal. And for me, in front of goal, obviously, it's, it's clear to see that he did more than Dominic Calvert-Lewin. In, in, he did more than Dominic Calvert-Lewin in the 10 minutes he was given at the end of the game. He did more than Calvert-Lewin in 80 minutes. I think that's that's probably the biggest thing to take from that. I don't think that's probably because Calvert-Lewin, I, I think I don't think the tactics suit Dominic Calvert-Lewin at all. I think he's a player who likes to be in the box scoring goals. Um, he's a poacher. He's not a, a, a target player. He's not a target man. Whereas I think Beto maybe suits the long ball, suits this rough and tumble football a little bit more than Dominic Calvert-Lewin. So I think Beto, you know, definitely thrived um, given the opportunity uh, of coming off the bench. And I was I was so happy for him. He was so distraught. And I, I think it is clear to see that, that Dice really has mismanaged him in, in recent weeks, especially after that Southampton game. So I'm just so glad he got on the score sheet. Hopefully he can maybe string it together and, and who knows, he might get the star against Southampton. I highly doubt it. I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin will come back in, but... I was very, very happy to see Beto on the score sheet. But that's all for my thoughts, really. Overall, very poor. Um, a good point. Um, that you know, Despite us playing very poor, it's a good point on paper. Fulham are a decent side. I think Marco Silva's got them very well drilled. They came to Goodison. They set up well. They created enough chances probably to win the game. And we were probably lucky to come away with a point. But that being said, I think that's probably one of the hallmarks of Daesh football. You, you can play absolutely horrendously and somehow come away with a point. So... Yeah, quite lucky, a very poor performance, but we've got a point on the board. That point tally keeps on ticking over and we're now going on to the must-win game at St. Mary's next weekend against Southampton, which no doubt I'll, I'll talk to you in the in the run-up to that one. But fingers crossed we can get a result there. Let me know your thoughts on today's performance against Fulham. Um, are you happy with the point? Are you happy with Beto? Are you, what are you thinking about certain performances like Ashley Young? I think he had a good game as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll speak to you soon.